started out So here we go, Bernie. Talk us through what's, what was the mindset coming in? Bill Belichick in town. The Browns are ready to go. We're all excited. Jacoby Brissett. You know, coming out, coming out in the game, last week we talked about both teams are struggling at stopping the run. Both teams are doing excellent from an offensive standpoint at running the football. So we anticipated both teams having a physical presence, coming out, establishing the run, establishing the line of scrimmage. We came out in our game, we came out in no back, threw the ball on first down, and then tried to bootleg throw on second and five. Let's take a look at the play. Let's just go right into it and break it down. We get the ball, and then we're as Browns fans, we're thinking, okay, let's just run Nick Chubb. We've heard the complaints. We're not running him enough. And here's our play, Bernie. So, But one of the things we talked about last week, the attention to detail of the Bill Belichick New England defense, they set their edges. They always understand not getting beat outside. So knowing that we're doing a bootleg play action um, type of football team, their edges, their ends here, aren't going to let Jacoby Brissett get outside of him. So when you have a bootleg like this and you have a team that's really anticipating these type of throws because – we started last year's game with 13 personnel and trying to throw the ball in, in there. So I absolutely don't mind throwing the ball with that personnel group. But we knew that Bill Belichick's defense was going to understand and be anticipating those type bootlegs. So that's not, that's not a game, that's not a type of sequence where you want to catch them off guard. And I think we were trying to get trying to be a little too cute with them. Well, we were trying to be a little too cute. And, and all I mean, you're exactly right. It all, all comes down to uh, who their head football coach is. And their head football coach is one of the smartest coaches that's ever coached the game, and that's Bill Belichick. And you're absolutely right. He is not going to let you and not going to let his team get beat on a bootleg, and I wish we would have, you would have been in that uh, offensive meeting room, or someone would have been in that offensive room. But they should know this, and you could tell it when they started to run the play. Those guys are going to be where they're supposed to be, when they're yes. supposed to be there, and they're exactly what happened on yeah. that play. Yeah, we and talked play, about we talked and, about that. And last the play week. ended up with a turnover or an interception. Right, just like they they practiced that stuff during the week. We talked about it. We talked about it last week that they were going to be anticipating those type of plays. And earlier, the second play of the game, they anticipated that they were prepared for it, just like we talked about they were going to be prepared for fourth and one in those quarterback sneaks. They're going to pinch their defensive but tackles. This, this is what drives the fans nuts. It feels like we're trying to outcoach. It feels like Stefanski's wanting to try and outcoach Bill Belichick. They asked Coach Belichick at the press conference after, hey, were you surprised on the Browns throwing to Farrell Brown, the third string tight end? <laughs> And Bernie, we talked before the yeah. show. There was nobody yes. surprised to well, what Bert Belichick said. Yeah, well, I, I saw Coach Belichick before the game. And again, not that we're talking strategy before the game. You don't want to put anybody in, in those type situations. But you are reading body language and you're trying to figure out who's doing what and, and what you may be anticipating and stuff. And I could just tell by the look in his eyes that he had an air of confidence in terms of understanding what he wanted to do during the game. And just like last year, we started out in that 13 personnel of trying to throw the ball with some depth down to the, the tight ends down the field. He anticipated and had prepared his team for, for exactly that. All right, so now we got to go quickly off over on defense. Now, as again... An angry fan, I'm thinking it's about time we stop the quarterback. We make every quarterback that comes into Cleveland Stadium look like he's going to the Hall of Fame, but this time it's Zappy. Let's see this play. Zappy. Hanford, how do you defend this guy? And were you surprised that he had the success he had? I was really surprised because you're talking about uh, they're pretty much down to their third string quarterback. And it was just an outstanding play on their end. I mean, you look at the wide receiver, you're going to see two defensive backs defending against this play and no one got to the ball. And you could just see he just went up and made a good play. But when you look at Zappi all day, I mean, the guy went 24 for 34, 309 yards and two touchdowns. No burning. This is key. No 
interceptions. We're yeah. talking about a third string quarterback that with a hundred and eighteen point four yeah. quarterback yeah. rating against us. Yeah. Making a play in the first quarter here, making a throw down down into double coverage that really a veteran quarterback could make. And those that type throw right there, that's actually pretty deep that's actually pretty good coverage. And yeah. I don't mind sometimes from a defensive perspective, if you get beat like that, playing tough like that. We talked last week about uh, the defensive line not getting getting more pressure, getting more of the press coverage, getting five guys involved in the pass rush. You saw five guys rushing there, anticipating anticipating some of the runs and stuff. I if if a defensive back is in those positions, that that that's that's. That's the things that sometimes happen. And, and I'm going to say this real quick. Uh, I, I was I was shocked a little bit because uh, I didn't know that he had this, Zappy had this in him, because what he did was he threw that ball, and he he knew he knew the th- he knew to throw that ball with the defensive back at his back to him. At so, the back, and with height. In the old right, days, you would, right, in the old days, you wouldn't throw right, with that type of height right, because the safety would come right. over and decapitate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Now you can't take out the defenseless receiver. So, again, as a fourth round draft pick, a rookie from Western Kentucky yeah. to have that type of presence and vision, uh, that type of experience to make that type of throw where only his guy could catch it was, was unfortunately so, and, awesome. And I'm going to angry kid, but nine times out of ten, when that happens, when the defensive back have his back to him, he knows that he's either going to catch that ball, he's going to be complete, or he's going to get past it and fear. Right. So, you know, Hanford, you made a good point. Turnovers. Coming into the game yesterday, the Browns were ranked 25th yeah. in turnovers. Only two. 20, two, what, what, two, uh, two interceptions. So, and, and I know later on, Miles got that fumble, but what, where's the interceptions? Our defensive backs aren't even close enough to even have pass interference, let alone interceptions. But where's uh, where's all the ball hawking? Where's the strip sack? Where's the fumbles? I don't I, we're looking for the turnovers. They're not happening, and this is supposed to be an elite defense. Well, and, and that's something uh, Stefanski talked about before the game, uh, coming into this game, some of the things that he wanted to see happen. Exact, uh, Angry Ken, you, you're 100% right. I mean, you are just absolutely right on this thing. And coming into this ball game, I think we only had two interceptions. And uh, and even in this game, we didn't have any Right. Interceptions. We have to turn to get the ball turned. We have to get more turnovers. You know, when you're not pu- when you're not putting teams in longer down passing situations, the third and long situations, the second and longer situations, where you're able, to, you're not able to force them into throwing. You're not able to actually force more of that pressure on them. So we've been playing. We talked about it at length last week. We've been playing a lot of cover four, uh, rush four guys, softer zone type coverages. If you're not being forced to have to throw the ball and you're not in longer down and distance situations and you're playing those zone coverages, you're typically not going to get those type of turnovers and stuff. We did try to make a little bit of transition this past week with a little more press coverage, a little more pressure on you in an attempt to do that. But they were in such favorable down and distance situations, not having to overly throw the ball and use that play action game. Well, I'm going to ask you this real quick, um, and, and and I'll answer to myself. I mean, I was a little bit shocked. I mean, coming into this ball game, I thought it was a game that we should win. I, I thought it was a game that we're going to win uh, because when you look at this Belichick team, I mean, it's, it, it's a decent football team, but it's not uh, a great football team. And we had them at home, and uh, I'm, I'm a little bit shocked that uh, we didn't win this ball game. Uh, one of the things is – that and this is probably half a joke, but half serious and stuff, is we. I have such respect for being in that rectangle, such respect for the honor of being on that field. And you and me were down on the field yesterday, and being the guys that have played on the field, and now it's old guys yeah. that are watching, and then yeah. somewhat working from the media perspective, and then just talking and kind of getting a feel for what's going to happen during the game. But some of the pregame stuff we did yesterday, and. Again, I understand the entertainment value of the game and the business side of it and the marketing side of it. But, boy, like yesterday we chucked, joked earlier in the year about your love for the elf yeah, on, this, yeah. on in the middle of the field. Yeah. I'm not sure that's evolving too good with a good luck <laughs> charm and stuff. And not that we're superstitious and stuff. But – when it does come to respect and stuff, that that guitar smash. Well, Bernie, we're talk doing. about the guitar smash because yeah. you know it, it's. This I, is what's made. This is why my head's going to explode. <laughs> we're the dog pound. We're the angry dogs. We're trying to create an environment. 
I get it. New ownership, Haslam's whatever their marketing team, and maybe it's tight in the right. But Bernie, you're standing on a stage smashing a guitar, and the Patriots are trying to go around you. How did you feel on the stage with that going on? Well, I have a lot of history in my life with guitars and stuff. Between between smashing some kid rock guitars over some bad boyfriends of my daughter's heads to to opening christening hard rocks with a, the crashing of guitars to yesterday, again, from a marketing perspective, doing the guitar smash. It's kind of, I guess, cool from that standpoint. It's not cool. But it's from, gimmicky. But it's from, gimmicky. From, it's, from the marketing side, I absolutely see that. Okay. But, from the play, but from the player side, what happened yesterday and what, I, again, the, us older guys being involved with it, that, that thing happens right by the visiting team's um, locker room right by the visiting team sidelines. So I'm here right before the game. I'm dressed in that corny 216, and I love Machine Gun Kelly. I got to do the. Uh, but that's what I, I was going to ask. 216 till I died. I got to do the. All right, the, guys, the, the wait, wait, wait. I got the. I got. I got the. But but for for the way that for the way that happened to see the Patriots' faces right at five minutes to one. And seeing that how they were, they, they was com pampered. It yeah. was completely quiet yeah, in that tunnel yeah, to yeah. see fifty three guys like that. And these guys were significantly bigger than us yesterday yeah. to notice the size. <laughs> yes. But it was almost like uh, we violated them that their anger level. And they came out in that first quarter just like the Jets came out in yeah, the third quarter yeah, with yeah. a level of intensity uh, that yeah. wasn't right. good that, for that us. That Browns go fans. back. Get rid of the elf. Get rid of the guitars. <laughs> bring back Hanford and the dog pound. We're part. Parking. Let's go back to the game so we can't stop the pass. What do we do? Let's focus on the run. Oh, no. We can't stop the run either. Well, Let's see Stevenson. Well, I'm going to say this. this oh, wow. This, 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 and this is third and ten right here. Yeah. You, you're talking about stopping the run. We haven't been able to stop the run all we Gabby, had a past few games. Boy, this too. is this 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 should have never gotten where it was supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, and, and again to the Joe, Joe to the crucified Joe Woods here. Look, if this is a run left. He has a weak safety blitz, uh, Delpit, right into the hole where the run is is coming to. From a defensive perspective, a defensive play call. Again, I'm not uh, Joe Woods' marketing agent, but that's a well called defense. That should stunt that run, but. I believe that we got a couple guys um, in the outside gap not having good run gap integrity, and you get a third and 10, 31-yard run. I mean, that that literally makes you sick. Well, and, and the thing that really upsets me and makes me mad every time I watch that particular play is all week they talked about tackling. We're going to tackle. We're going to tackle better. And you see, you talked about it. Deffitt came up there. He should have made the tackle, made the play right away. And then you got another cornerback right there, Emerson, that should have never, never, never let that play get on the outside of him. It shouldn't have got to him, but it did get to him. Now he's got to make the play, and he didn't make the play. And, again, we emphasize all week tackling, 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 and still you could see so, didn't right, do so any good. Heifer, we talked about coaching it up. You're the coach of the defense now. We're seeing this time and time again. Do you sit some of these guys down? How do how does these change? We asked last week. Explain Denzel Ward. Explain what you're doing again today. Uh, Delpit. Explain what was going on. And if they can't, if they're not adjusting, do you sit them down? What do you do, Hanford? And, and here's the problem. Here's the problem with that because going into this ball game, we were already short some players. Uh, you know, because uh, you talked about it, Denzel Ward didn't play. He was in concussion protocol. Obviously, he didn't dress. He didn't play in this ball game. And so you, we brought Greedy Williams back out, and we got Emerson. So we only have uh, only a, a, a short number of corners on the uh, roster right now. So we got to use these guys. But it's just come down to these guys wanting to make plays, and for some reason, we're not making the plays. Well, it's just. It's disappointing when in the running game we're critiquing a corner for bad run run performance. So if your cornerback is the reason for your weak link, you're already at the third level. So there's issues before that even to how you got to Emerson right there. You don't want that to happen. You can't and and if that was an issue this past week, 
with uh, the New England Patriots. It's Look even out. more of an issue with the Baltimore Look Ravens. I, I, know where you, I know what you're thinking, and yeah. I know where you're headed. I it's, it's, those, it's those safeties in the middle, and you know I don't have a problem with it. I, I, there's a problem right yeah, there. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll leave it at that right now. Yeah, no, we'll, come, we'll, come, we'll, okay. we'll talk about the freight train that's steaming uh, our way in a few minutes. But before we talk about the, one of the great plays that uh, Jacoby had in the throne, I'm not ready to show it yet, but – Talk about that quarterback sneak. You know, everybody's talking Jacoby Brissett has is able to get that quarterback sneak. You know Coach Belichick knows how to defend that. They must have practiced that a hundred <laughs> times. Bernie Hanford, well, you pinch the line right there and, and no chance. Well, look again, it's we not the, it's, it's not the, it's about. not to promote the podcast and to call us Nostradamus and no, stuff. No, promote it. But promote to talk it. through last week at this exact time last week, we were talking about wanting to just call over to the call over to the game plan <laughs> to the coaches to the front office and not to be not not again not to promote ourselves or to over glorify ourselves with it but knowing that I spend time with him and knowing in those meetings what you're going to do for that and knowing that we did not do the quarterback sneak last week that we talked about it that Bill Belichick will be looking at a 6-2 defense and or having his two defensive tackles in there shaded up to head up to inside of the guards and pinching inside knowing that the quarterback sneak is the 95 percentile of plays that we're going to run especially after not last week not running it and then to have um to have that materialize just like that um and not get the first down and then get the touchdown right All after right, so that was a bad season right, so let's, let's ask you this you get there you're jacoby now put bernie this is you now because you said you would change plays and by the way it was belichick that we're going against so you get there you see they're pinched in you're going to have a time hard time on that quarterback sneak do you call timeout do you change the play or you just put your head down and try and make it. No, so this is when we talk about this last week. And and when a great team, a championship team, needs a yard, you believe you're going to get a yard. And this is where I, I love the calmness and I love the even keelness most all the time of us coaches and quarterbacks. Except there are strategic times when your emotion and your adrenaline and your passion – has to be as genuine as possible, even if it's not, a, we used to call F and E, false yeah, enthusiasm. Yeah, 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 but yeah. you must get, and what I absolutely would do, Ken, dog, you saw it all the time. I would look at my center and two guards in the eyes and say, this is all on us right now, okay? I, we are going inside. We're squeezing in. And I would have reminded both guys, we squeeze in because they're going to pinch. They're going to pinch on that play, and you remind them, and you get real adrenaline. You're almost frosting at the mouth, almost as that's why I'm drinking my know, CBD Bernie, I feel juice like you today. Could get that yard right now. No, well, you got to get your lineman so motivated <laughs> to do that. Up. You know, Let's do it. Yeah. Well, and when yeah, you do that, they believe in yeah. it. And I mean, that sounds corny. It sounds like it's adrenaline. That it sounds like it's made up for TV Bernie, and stuff. Well, that let me, is let me, the simple thing. Let me, thing. Let me, let me say guys. this. Let me. Let me. And here's where I'm headed right with that on those same line because I guarantee you here's what happened and and it's all about attitude it's all about a frame of mind and you're exactly right I guarantee you what Belichick did he went in that defensive meeting room this year right and he oh. sit there and he talked to those guys on defense and he probably showed them he said let me show you guys one damn thing right let here. me show like, there, there was let a me special show you one segment thing. he said he said they have gone for it on fourth down six times and they've gotten all six of them they've I don't want to see that happen. It's all about attitude, and we are not going to let them get it. Right. You see what happened? Those guys, they went out, and they stopped us, and we didn't right. get it. Yeah, and he would add to that. He would add that, and he would add, look, they just don't respect you. They yeah. think you suck. Yeah. They think I, they could just run you over. Yeah. Look, they just do that. They're telling you yeah. they're going to do that. That's how little they think of you. Huh. That gets those guys so frosted, so huh. fired up. They are telling you this is what we're going to do, and you can't And you're stop not them. tough enough you to stop, stop us. us. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Deal with it. You know what? It. They're right. They're mm. right. They are tougher than us, and they stopped us. <laughs> there was a few highlights Here's a play, uh, Gab. Let's run this one. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, tough day, but this was one of the highlights. Albeit, man, it was a tight window. But, uh, Bernie, walk us through this. Okay, fourth and five. I, of, I love the end result. I love the concept of the play. When you have press coverage like this, you have 
You have man coverage across the board here. You have the outside guy running a hitch. 27 there, the inside slot uh, nickel back has to cover Amari Cooper from the whole field there with inside help. So for Amari Cooper here to run this fade like this, and I love throwing the fades. It's a beautiful throw and catch. Non-high percentages on fourth and five. But to be able for Amari to act like it's going to the back pylon and then to throw his hands up at the last second, keeping 27, um, unsure of, of, of when to, for him to make the stop. But that's actually textbook. textbook and it's one of the own. most, I, I think it's one of the most beautiful throws that Jacoby had all day. Uh, when he made that throw in there, obviously I wouldn't. Yeah. Have, you could, when I see two defensive backs in there, I wouldn't have had the guts to throw that yeah. play in there. But, but it was just a great, great play, great route, and uh, great hands. Uh, Amari Cooper coming down with the ball, and not only coming down with the ball, uh, being in bounds. Being in bounds, his footwork is awesome. Yeah. And keep this in mind too. We were talking, unfortunately, about this with Bailey Zappi early in the game when he threw the fade down the left side um, against Greg Newsom and stuff. Throwing balls and throwing fades like that, we don't see us doing a lot of that. That's one of the few times we've done that this year. Um, you, get the, you get the completions like that. You get the defensive holdings. You get the pass interferences like that. Those are really good shots to take and for us to do, do more of that. So, you know what, guys? You talked about it. Hanford, got to give you credit where credit's due. You weren't sold on Jacoby coming in. Mm. We tried to talk you. Angry Ken was all in on Jacoby. Mm. Uh, but now... Coaches have them on film. You're beginning to see the NFL is all about adjustments. Was there a time yesterday in the game where we should have said, maybe we put in Josh? I personally, I, I you know, I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't like to. Uh, no spark. No I don't spark. like to change um, um, in the middle of a ball game like that. Yeah, change uh, for just I, change. I, yeah, I, I think if you want to do it, you want to give him uh, Dobbs a, a shot this week? Let's go ahead and get him ready to play. But when you look at Jacoby, let's just face it, guys. Jacoby is Jacoby. And uh, and, and this is what I talked about uh, earlier uh, in some of our shows. I mean, I just wasn't all in on him, but I just have to realize uh, he's a backup. He's always been a backup, and I have no disrespect to him, but he's uh, he's probably always going to be well, a backup. you know backup. what, Bernie? I watched highlights of you. You would throw your receivers open. He does not throw his receivers open. Well, he did on he did on that Amari Cooper one. I love that catch. And and again, I'm not going to be an, uh, a Jacoby apologist, and I'm not being a QB apologist here. Um, but whether it's Jacoby Brissett, uh, Josh Dobbs yesterday, or Jesus Christ. We are still going to end up being two and four after it. Um, to, uh, offensively, we could absolutely pick on things that we need to get better at. There's no doubt about it. But, man, what, what happened to us from a special teams perspective, what happened to us defensively yesterday, we, that was, a, that was right. an upstream battle. Right, well, you know guys. what we – and I'm say yeah. angry can real quick. You know what we like about Jacoby? We like Jacoby being Jacoby, and that means not trying to do too much. Mm -hmm. And now he's trying to do too much, and as a result, and he still throws some, had some good mm -hmm. plays. He threw some good balls mm -hmm. to Donald People Jones, but when he tried to do too much, that's when the mistakes. So, so is happen. that coaching Hanford? In fact, you know what? We're going to go on a little okay. rapid fire here. I want to ask you. I'm going to throw you guys questions. Okay. We don't want long answers. Mm -hmm. Just give me short okay. answers. Is it a coaching situation? Are we asking him to do too much? I don't think it's a coaching situation. I don't think we're asking him to do too much. I think he just taking it upon himself at certain times during the ball game. He feels that the ball, the game is getting away, and he needs to make a play. But instead of just sticking in the framework of uh, of what he's supposed to do, just stay right there. Don't do it. don't try to do too much, and I think it'd be okay. All right, then, Bernie, I'm going to go to you on this one. Is it the play calling? Should we be calling different plays? Should we establish the running game? Sometimes we absolutely, as quarterbacks, we try to do too much to your first question. And when sometimes we are trying to do too much and we put that pressure on ourselves, we do need help with the play calling. And, again, I, I know Kevin Stefanski, when you only hand a bottle to Nick Chubb 12 times, you don't go into a game anticipating only 12 carries for Nick Chubb, four for Kareem Hunt. So, Absolutely, you can help them out and help them out in in your play calling with the running game, implementing your Nick Chubbs and Cream Hunt earlier from that perspective. Okay, so we're 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 going at halftime. 
You know Belichick's the master of adjustments. We see no adjustments at halftime. Uh, we come in, we just keep doing the same thing. Bernie, are we? is Coach Stefanski losing the players? No, I wouldn't say he's losing the players. I think that they... They had they deferred coming uh, winning the toss. They got the ball coming out at, at the start of the third quarter. They got a seven play quick drive, immediate touchdown. All of a sudden, instead of a 10-6 game, it's a 17-6 game. Um, again, not wanting to throw it on the defense, but coming out that first drive of the important, third quarter. Important. It's if you if your defense is out there, you yeah. want to stop them important. offensively. If you, you get out score. there. You want to score. You want to show that you made adjustments and you're being able to move the ball. We did Absolutely. neither of those on the first two, and the game switched right 